I've once again jumped back to Photoshop and I want to talk this time about the eyedropper tool and how it can be used to select and use color. Um, we'll talk about how it can be used inside other Photoshop features and then we'll talk a little bit about changing the blending mode. I'll specifically show you how to change it when you're using a paintbrush and when you're using layers. So the first thing I want to do is reset my workspace. So I'm going to go to um, Window, Workspace, and then Reset Essentials because that's the one I'm using. And then I like to undock the Tools panel when I do my videos. I think you can see the panel better. In the example that I provided, um, we showed that you could paint right directly over an image. And so I need to make my background layer an actual layer. And when you grab a color to paint with, if you just paint with it, so let's do, let's do green because it's definitely different than the flower. And when you grab a green paintbrush and you grab the paintbrush tool, I grabbed it here, when you paint, you're going to be painting with the foreground color, and by default, it will be opaque, and it will just sit right in front of whatever you're painting over. But whenever you select a tool in Tools panel, you should always look at the options bar across the top of the screen, and it shows you various settings that you can choose, like how big or how soft the edges would be on your paintbrush. Maybe let, we'll do a soft edge brush, so that when we paint over the flower, it won't be so, so harsh. You can choose the opacity of how much would be applied. And so if we lowered that, without changing the blending mode, you can see that the, the green is going over the top of the flower, but it's only, in this case, 37% opaque, and so you're still seeing the original pink color below. But there's also an option that we haven't talked about yet called mode, and that is a blending mode, and it affects how the color you're applying affects what the colors beneath it. And so if you chose, let's say, darken, and then you started to paint with the green color, it would produce an effect that is different than painting with opaque um, ink or paint. If you chose overlay, that would give you a different look. It's overlaying one color on top of another, and it actually is interacting in such a way that it makes the flower look orange. You could even do the hue, and so you could change the hue and change the flower to look like it's green. It's not really having too much effect on the, the petals, I mean not the petals, the leaves, because the leaves are already green, but it is changing them. It's changing it to a different shade of green down here. You could even do color and see what the difference between changing the color and the hue are. In, in general, the color is going to end up being brighter than the hue. But the interaction of your green color to the original background color is what is causing the, the blending mode to create different effects, and so that's what a blending mode does. I'm going to choose to revert this, file revert. I think it's a good idea to practice non-destructive editing, and so if you wanted to do that, you could duplicate the layer, but also you could just create a new layer, and you can paint right over the layer. So I still have color selected, but now I'm on layer one. When you paint with your paintbrush, oh, I lied to you. I'm going to change it to normal. So now when you use layer one, you can still paint just like you would with your paintbrush, but now because it's on a separate layer, you have to tell the layer to blend. And when you use a blending mode, everything kind of flows downhill. And so when you're painting directly onto the image with the roses, it's going to blend everything on that layer together. But if you change a layer blending mode, like we talked about in the slideshow, from normal to let's say screen, you can see it affected the image over here on the left hand side. Everything blends down and so it'll affect everything it comes in contact with. So in this case the green little blob comes in contact with the background image. If there was something between layer one and the background, the blending would affect the layer between layer one and the background. What I like about the layer blending mode as opposed to just a general blending mode is as I paint over my little flower here and we'll pretend that I did a good job of not getting too much of the outside. I can paint the whole thing and I could say I really like the way it looks so I'm definitely painting the whole rose. And then after I'm done I can take a step back and go kind of looks like an apparition. It looks like um, like the way that they would format like ghosts in the 80s in movies. Um, and I could say maybe I don't want that look in my project. But very easily, I could click through all the different options and see what's available. Like Color Dodge looks a little bit intense, but maybe if I lower the opacity, see how it just makes that 
flower stand out a little bit more. Maybe that's what I need for my project. But you can very quickly try all the different options for, for what you're working with. So I kind of like the way this looks. It makes the flowers look blue. Maybe we could lower the opacity so it's not as intense. Um, and you can do different things, but because it's on its own layer, it's non-destructive, and you can try different blending options. Now, the pros and cons to that are, when you do the layer, the entire layer has to have the same blending mode. But when I was with the paintbrush, I could switch back and forth and just paint a little bit here and a little bit there. Okay, I want to talk about the eyedropper tool, which we haven't really talked about too much yet. When you use your color picker for your foreground or your background color, we talked about using the hue slider and the brightness and saturation options to choose a color. But when you are in a dialog box selecting color, you can always leave the box and it will and your cursor will become an eyedropper. And so if you wanted to use this shade of green for the text on your poster, you could click that area and you could use the eyedropper tool to select the area. And so at kind of a base level, if we go to the tools panel, if you grab the dropper tool, you can then click, 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 click all the way around your page and you can keep clicking the colors and as you click them you can see that the foreground color is changing and so if you're trying to find a nice color to add some text to your poster or something like that but you want the color to come directly from the image you can select it and then you can use the color but what I really want to emphasize because I think most people kind of get the idea of the dropper tool is that whenever you're using something like the picker um, a dialog box that requires you to select color when in doubt leave make your cursor leave the dialog box and see if you get a dropper tool and then from inside whatever you're trying to create you can select the color that you want to work with and so the example I use in the slideshow is if you are trying to select let's get rid of this extra layer here you're trying to select all the pink in the image to change the color of the flowers one option is to use the select menu and then choose color range and inside the color range dialog one of the options is to use sampled colors and so you can click inside this black area and kind of hope you get the right color so right now see all the white I clicked down here and it represented the green so it grabbed all the greens but if you click over here you'll get more like the flowers but if you leave the dialog box and you hover over your image, you can use the actual dropper tool. And as you click on the image, it will select the colors that you're choosing. You can hold shift and you can select all the different colors in the flowers. And so you can keep clicking until you get all the colors that you're happy with. And then when you select OK, you now selected all the colors for your flowers. And then you could do like hue and saturation adjustment and you could change the colors of your flowers. And so my expectation is that now you'll just be aware that whenever you have a dialog box that requires you to select color in some way, you know that you can leave the dialog and use the actual picture to select your color. These are pretty yellow flowers. Okay, um, that wraps up this video. So I'd like you to make sure that you're comfortable using the eyedropper tool and layer blending modes or blending modes when using a paintbrush. And if you are, you can move on to the next video and we will continue and talk about channels.